Intelligent Motion. That's the slogan here at Columbus McKinnon. Today we're going to show you how products, they lift and move products you rely on and we're doing it. <laughs> Today we've traveled to Menominee Falls, Wisconsin to visit Columbus McKinnon Corporation. Columbus McKinnon makes intelligent motion systems, including hoists, cranes, control units, and more. They needed a faster, easier way for their customers to select products. We are going to talk with Bob. He's the plant manager at Columbus McKinnon. He has been here his whole career, all 26 years of them. And I hate to make age you by saying that, but that is an impressive fact. He knows everything about this place, and you're going to give us a tour today. And what are we going to be talking about and seeing? Columbus McKinnon Menominee Falls produces control products for crane systems, elevator systems, and mining applications. We're an assembly facility, and we do a lot of cool things around that design and build to order. Okay, let's go check it out. I need one of these in my house. Now, if I could put all my kids' toys in here, oh, and then yeah, when right. they wanted to play, yeah. they could just slide or out, and then bad kids, you could lock them oh, out. Oh, now that's no. even better. It's like okay, the, this, it's like this the is giving me all kinds of ideas. All right, so, Sarah, fancy so what's, storage what this unit. is an example of the components that go into the controls. It's really important that we're keeping our components safely stored. And what happens in the first process step is they're actually collecting the items to the bill material. And it's really coming down to accuracy. A lot of these parts you had handled are like, but sit, but different. So mm -hmm. this part may may look and be using um, a fuse, yeah. but they're quite different. So we've invested in this to help with mistake proofing, and it does do some really neat, neat things to help our inventory controllers. Yeah, Go we've ahead. got the storage part down. Yep. Now what, where are we, what are we gonna see next in the yeah, process? Yeah, so the parts are kitted, and then actually the work order is gonna transfer to our to our machining process for the panels. Okay, let's go look at that. Great. So, Bob, this is step two of the process. What is this area called? We call this the panel modification station, where the panels are brought in blank and we do our drilling and our tapping, preparing them for assembly. We're, we're staged with blank or raw mm -hmm. panels that were brought in. They get fixtured onto this CNC system and it goes through a, a drilling, tapping, what we call a panel modification. So when these panels are done, this rack is designed to store the modified panels, and this will then become ready for assembly. And is that what we're moving next? Yep. Okay, so now we're gonna move to the assembly process. Yep. You can see easily how if these weren't all precise, yeah, this could become a really big problem. It's yeah. like Ikea furniture. Yes. When you when it's, you know, they give you the they give you they all the things work. they say it's gonna come together. The Legos, they it work. Never does, oh, you've had telling problems? You, I always have problems. Oh. Yeah. Hopefully IKEA's not watching. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and tell us where we are now, Bob. So we're in step three of the process. Sarah, yes, and correct. We're on step three. This is the assembly of the panel. And this station actually shows the assembly process. How long can it take someone to work on to I mean to put all of these parts together? Is this like a whole morning worth of work? It seems like it would be to get all of the parts on Yeah, there. so it's again a really good question, but it goes back to the, the variety of panels that come through here. Yeah, depends on the size of the panel and what's needed on the panel. Right, Angelo, would this panel be uh, more in the neighborhood of an hour or two? Yeah, probably about an hour and a half. Okay, so now that we have the assembly complete, Correct. we are taking this to the next station and I have the honors of pushing it. Wow. I mean, there's not a lot that makes me as excited <laughs> about pushing something that has just been assembled to the next station. Right. We did it. We did it. We didn't break anything. Okay, hey Bob, we're at the the fourth step, wiring. Correct. Um, so what, Correct. tell me what happens here. Excellent. So this panel has been assembled, and I'm going to just show you the diagram here. This is the electrical schematic. Okay. So the wiring process is going to install the wire. We go through the reds, the blues, the greens, from point to point, and then they're going to highlight that as installed and move through the entire print to prepare this panel with all the electrical connections. And about how long does it take to wire one panel? Great, so this is in the medium to small and it's gonna be in the four to eight hours. Oh wow, that's the most time intensive. It's the most, the late, yeah, the most Yeah, and you can see pressing. why. I mean, it takes some, it takes precision and accuracy. You're doing a great job. Thank yeah. you so much for letting us get you on camera. <laughs> okay, so the once the wiring process is complete, we will do what with the with the panel? So the panel is going to go through a final quality visual inspection. It's going to be transferred to enclosure for assembly into the enclosure. Okay, so let's go check it out. 
We are going in, okay, into the enclosure process here. Yeah, Ling is taking that assembled wired panel that's through quality check and marrying it up with this enclosure. From here, um, Lang closes it up and rolls it over to testing. Correct. Okay. After this is all signed off, verified, it's going to move again, staying on the cart, to functional test, which we call it. We're going to be programmed and set up for testing and effectively simulating a crane. Okay. Now that we've seen how they're made, let's take a look at intelligent control units in action. Okay, so I'm here with Tim, and Tim is a senior electrical engineer, and he is going to show me how to operate this crate. Okay, so what's, what's the object of, of this little activity that we're gonna be doing? We have on the end of the hook here now is a, it's a brake cylinder. This brake cylinder is a little bit too heavy for you to pick up by yourself, so we're gonna try to precisely move it into a location with anti-sway and then without anti-sway. What, what is the average person, like how often does it, how long does it take to get this right? can take years for a very good operator to, to do it. So. Okay, so we don't have years, and I'm very inexperienced, so we're gonna give this a shot, but kids do not try this at home. Okay. This is for the experienced people only, but this is the best part. Yeah. Okay, yeah. it's on. It's on, yeah. All right, here we go. I'm really worried <laughs> I'm gonna break it. A little bit past that hash mark. Yeah, a little bit past that, and now let go. There, you put it in there the right way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is with anti-sway on, and I think I can do it. Yeah, yes. there you go. All right. <laughs> we got it. <laughs> <laughs> We've seen how they're made, and we've seen them in action. Now we take a look at how Columbus McKinnon is making it easier for their customers to find and configure the exact product they need. So what, tell me what's happening here. What, what is this product we're looking at? So we have just configured a top-running single girder crane, and what it's doing is, is it's actually providing you all of the dimensions that allow you to fit this right into your factory. Now the customer can do it on their own. Okay, right. Each and every single time before they were calling in. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was a very long and involved process with a lot of math, a lot of calculus. Now what's happening is, is that you're able to do that in a period of minutes. This is a three to five minute endeavor, whereas before it was 30, 40, sometimes in the hours. Mm -hmm. And when you're talking about lifting a product like this, that accuracy is so important. It's crucial. You want to know every spot on the floor that you can lift. You don't want to have a surprise when you get out to the factory floor. You know, the Columbus McKinnon slogan is intelligent motion. So what does that mean? So at Columbus McKinnon, we have four key areas of focus within our business. Lifting, automation, linear motion, and conveyance. We at Columbus McKinnon continue to combine technologies across those different platforms to enhance the success of our customers. And then you've been here 25 years? Yes. And so how have you seen the company evolve and where do you see it going? Columbus McKinnon historically has been a, a lifting business. We're evolving into new markets today, which is really exciting for us and for employees coming into the organization because we want to stretch the boundaries of the typical vertical lifting to include other forms of technology, movement, and automation. And there's, there's a bright future for Columbus McKinnon as we continue to work with our customers and provide systems and solutions that they need outside of the traditional lifting business. And you think about how fast technology advances nowadays. What we're looking at today as some bright idea, five years from now might be something completely different. So I think there's just, there's a tremendous opportunity for growth within this organization. Okay, I can tell you're excited to be part of it. Definitely, I'm, I'm really proud to be part of it. I've seen a lot of changes over the last 25 years and I'm looking for the next 25. So what will the next 25 years look like for Columbus McKinnon? We look forward to finding out. Thanks for watching Built to Last. See you next time.